Hi everyone, my name is John Nguyen Tran and I'm a Sol Oracle Solution Engineer working in Western Virginia. Today I'm going to introduce to you how to set up the compute auto scaling with the load balancing service on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So the scenario here is an online retailer um, who needs their web application to respond to a variable level of customers' traffic. So the store needs to ensure the availability of their web application even during the expected traffic spike. So we will set up uh, the architecture like uh, this to demo um, how to combine the auto scaling and the load balancing service on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, we set up, uh, we will have a VCN set up on one reason and within the v one's VCN, there are three subnets. The first subnet will be a private subnet to host uh, the web servers. Uh, another subnet, it would be the public subnet to host the load balancer. And another subnet would be uh, used to host the bastion host, so we can jump from the bastion host to the private subnet. Uh, we also create the instant pools, auto scaling, instant configuration, and most important thing is the custom image. We use the custom image to spin up the web server automatically. All right, let's get started. Um, I already create a VCN. Um, so to create a VCN, you would need to go to Virtual Cloud Network and create a VCN and put the name and the side of block um, and then hit Create VCN. Um, in this low balancer, uh, low balancer VCN, I already create a private subnet, public subnet for the bastion host, a public subnet for a low balancer. You also need to create the NAT gateway um, to uh, allow the private subnet to have the internet access. So to create a NAT gateway, you just need to put the name and uh, the tag key and the value if needed. Once you create a NAT gateway, uh, make sure that you go to the route table and attach the NAT gateway. Um, uh, create a, a new route table for the NAT gateway and then attach it to the new route table. So already create a NAT gateway route table right here. And for the subnet, the private subnet um, will be will have the um, security list uh, called security list for private subnet and it needs to be attached to the route table of the NAT gateway route table. Let's click, take a look at the security list for the private subnet. This allow uh, the traffic to go through um, from 10.0.2.0 side is 24 and also the 10.0.1.0 side of 24. Um, both of them are in the public and uh, in, the, in the public and the low band, so the bastion host. Um, so let's take a look at subnet. Yes, so the bastion host subnet and the low band so subnet is allowed to get into a private subnet, not the public internet. So to create a low balancer, um, you would need to click on the hamburger menu right here and go to the networking and low balancer. And I already create a low balancer for the demo, but I will show you how to create it. Uh, first, you would put the name of low, the load balancer, select public, and select the total bandwidth uh, of your choice, and select the VCN that uh, you just created, and you would need to create the uh, you would need to select the public subnet of the load balancer. This is the one with the LB, and hit next. You would choose the low balancing policy as a way route wrapping. This will um, distribute the incoming traffic sequentially to each server in the backend set list. And for this demo, I will uh, use the port 80 as HTTP um, and I will leave everything as is as a default setting. And uh, the next step to create the listener will uh, the listener will listen, listen to the HTTP uh, port 80 um, for this demo, and then hit submit. Already, re already create one, um, and it will show you here. Let's take a look at the load balancer. So right now, it doesn't have any uh, thing attached to the load balancer. That's why it showed unknown, or overall health is unknown. So the next step, we will create a custom instant uh, VM and a bastion host VM. A bastion host VM will acting as a jump host. Uh, we will use a bastion host to jump into the custom instance, which uh, will be created in the private subnet. So let, let's go and create a, a custom instance. 
I already created one, but uh, I will show you the process of create the custom instance. We can choose the 81 and the smallest size of the VM. And in the configure networking, we will select the VCN um, in the compartment that we selected. And we also need to select for the custom instance, we need to select the private subnet. And let's go down and select the public key. So after we select the public key, we will make sure that the management uh, will be for the main one. Uh, the networking, you can select the private IP address on, for it or not, or the host name as well. And also, we need to include the cloud in the script. So basically, it will um, create a web server, uh, update the server, and open the firewall port. So let's hit create. And I already cre created one, so I don't uh, need to create another one. After it's done, um, you can go ahead and create a bastion host. A bastion host can be on any AD, and you can choose the smallest size of the VM. And make sure the, pub, uh, the subnet would be the public subnet for a bastion host, and assign a public IP address for it. And you also need to select a public key for it. And hit create. All right. So the public IP address of the bastion host is uh, 129.213.101.69. I'm going to SSH it into the instant, into the bastion host. So the command look like this. You will need the proxy command and pointing to the private key and the username to the bastion host. And after you do that, let's, let's hit enter. And here, as you can see that we already in the custom instant. We're going to make sure to run this command to update the custom instant. And also, we want to make sure that the HTTP is allowed uh, to get through. As you can see, it's already enabled. And we want to make sure that the HTTP service is enabled as well. So we need to write the maintenance config file in, in the HTTP folder. So this will allow the load balancer looking for the 200 response from the instant to determine it's healthy. Um, the, default, uh, let's, the default 300 error response ensure that the load balancer doesn't distribute incoming requests to the new instant prematurely. All right. Let me make sure that we have um, the HTML call maintenance file uh, written and we will, we will put 503 service unavailable. Okay. And we need to uh, write a script for warm up. And the script looks like this. But before running the script, we would make sure the warm up service file look like this. And let's run the warm up file. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to create a custom um, configuration, uh, instant configuration by select the custom instant that we created earlier and hit uh, more action select more action and create instant configuration and we're going to go ahead and create so in this step you also need to create an instant pool by hit the instant pool as option we're going to put the number of instant in this demo is two and we already create the load balancer. Um, so let's select the load balancer right here and select the, the load balancer under the compartment and the backend set. And we're going to use the port 80. And for the 80 uh, availability domain selection, 
Uh, you can choose either 81, 82, 83 for the first one. I would go for the 81 and select the load balancer VCN. Here you will select the private subnet and additional selection here. Would we'll create select the 83 as well as the load balancer VCN and the private subnet. All right, so everything looks good and hit create instant pull. As you can see, it's um, making the uh, progress right now. And if we go to the create instances, and um, we, if we go to create in instances, it's try to provisioning uh, the first VM right now. And a second VM, as you can see, is on 81 and 83 as we selected. For the folder domain, it's not gonna be. Uh, it's gonna randomly select it for us, unless you want to specify the full domain when we create the instant pool. And it's also attaching the load balancer, um, which we created earlier. So after the instant pool finished creating the two new servers, as you can see here, we can go back and check the instant pools right here. And it's still provisioning. Uh, the, the two additional servers already running, uh, which is good. The load balancer already attached to it. And uh, in the work request, you can see it's still running. Now it's complete 100%. So the next step is to create an auto scaling configuration by clicking the more action and create auto scaling configuration. We're going to leave the 300 second cooldown um, for the scaling action. It's a five minutes interval. And we're going to select the instant, instant pool that we just created. For the performance matrix, you can either select CPU utilization or memory utilization. Uh, I would do the CPU utilization for this demo. And it will, for the minimum number of instant, I will select two minimum number of instant. And the maximum number of instant, I would do eight. And the in initial number of instant is two. And let's say when it's greater than 90% of the CPU utilization, it will add two more servers. And Let's say when it's under 70% threshold, it will remove two instant or two compute automatically. All right, let's create. We need to make sure that the two VMs is already in the load balancer in the backend set. So right now the overall status is still unknown because it needs some time to check the health, um, the heartbeat of the server. And as you can see, the, now it changed the number of backend is to two from zero to two. And as you now can see, it has a 10.0.045, 10.0.046, uh, in the backend set. Let's go to the load balancer detail, and we're going to hit the server, the web server. Voila. Now we can see the uh, load balancer is showing the custom instant. And let's refresh it to see if it's changed. As you can see, it's changing, it's changing the identical number of the server, 811251, and another one, 240864. Okay. So finally, the instant pool is showing the scaling status, meaning that it's adding two additional server in the backend automatically. Uh, we, if we refresh the browser, we can see a uh, peak of the CPU utilization to 100%. And at this point, it should um, add 
uh, two new server into the instant pool. Uh, as you can see, this one is the new one because it's trying to check the back and health status. Um, and you can see that it's um, create a new instant pool right here. Uh, it, it create a new instant in the work request. And if we refresh the load balancer, it will give the new identical server a uh, new identical number which is which are different to the two original identical number it still have the the original server in the back end but it's good that it's um at two new server automatically when the utilization is above 90% Now, as you can see, the back and health status is showing OK, mean, meaning that the load balancer already finished checking the health status of all servers for server. And the instant pool, as of right now, um, after five minutes of um, checking, it see the uh, matrix of the utilization is going down um, to almost 0% in this case, which um, under 70% we set in the policy it will say uh, it will um, terminate the two original server from the instant pool, and it's automatically scaling right now. Uh, if we go back to what requests is try to detach the load balancer and terminate the instant in the pool. If we go in here and refresh the the load balancer, we will see. Five six seven six six five six zero seven seven three one is the two new server that we just added. Uh, that is the uh, instant pool added um, to the pool, and it's terminating the two original server. Now, as you can see, it's terminating um, the two original server, and it's automatically happened in the backend. All right. If you have any question. Please feel free to put a comment below. Thank you for watching.